It's season six, part two of the Venezia takeover, and we're here because Sebastiano Esposito has gone to Tottenham. Not by choice. The little bug, which obviously, to begin with, we couldn't get into the club. Uh, he was at Inter Milan. Then when we finally ticked over and he was at our club, we couldn't get him out of the under-18s. I don't know why. So for every time that the under-18s or the under-21s, whatever he was playing for, had a game on the same day that we had a game, he couldn't play. He was ineligible for playing two games in a day. And that got very frustrating. So I decided to just sell him because I don't know why my game is bugged that much. I hope I haven't seen anything else since. And the other player in the team that we signed that had the same problem to begin with doesn't have that problem that Esposito does. So God only knows what's happened there. But anyway, we've managed to pick up £15 million for him. So considering we only signed for £8.5 million, uh, he scored 17 in 18 games, which is really disappointing that we've had to sell him. We've doubled our money almost. I'll take it. I'll take it at the end of the day. What we have done with it, though, is quite intelligent. Now, we have, we've have also sold a few other players, too. I didn't mention a few of the players that we sold in the last episode, but we did sell a few other players. Uh, what I have done with it, I've been quite smart, I feel. Uh, now, a few people, when we first started the save, mentioned about the little American link that we have with Venezia because of the owners. Will Ortiz is the first American guy that I have signed, and I think he looks incredible. Yes, he's 18 years of age. He doesn't have the best technicals. He has what I need, a good first touch and a good finish. But his mental attributes are phenomenal, and his physical attributes will do. For 18 years of age, and the fact that we picked him up on a free because his contract ran out, he's called six. 1634 for Atlanta United 2, Atlanta United 2. I think that's a really good signing. Hannibal Magebury is going out of contract in the summer, and because I knew I was losing Esposito, I tried looking for a striker, could not find one that was better or just almost as good. And we do have a couple at the club, so what I decided to do was sign a couple of extra center attacking midfielders like Hannibal, who I think is amazing. Perfection is personality, he tries killer balls, I love that. And long range passes. Very direct. He plays in a number of different positions. I think he's phenomenal. And because he was going out of contract, we picked him up for £2 million. He hasn't played that well yet, but we're bedding him in. But this is arguably the best sign that we have made. Because we still had a little bit of money left over from the uh, the summer transfer window where we sold Scalvini and Chitalo. And then, of course, £15 million for Esposito. I decided to bring in this guy that I have had tabs on for a long time. He looks amazing. He's 21 years of age now. The best thing about him, I'll show you in a sec. But when he moved to Manchester City for £2.9 million, I had also matched that bid. In fact, I think I was the guy who kicked off that bid in war. And then he went to Man City instead. He chose to go to Man City. He's already played 34 games for Ajax. But when he moved back to Manchester City, one game in the start of the season. So we've given five games already and he scored three goals and got a player of the match. I think he's phenomenal. The best thing about it, he's also Spanish. So I don't have to worry about the non-EU rule. It doesn't exist. This guy has tries killer balls, he comes deep to get the ball, he plays that centre attacking midfield, but he can also play in the centre midfield role. Julio Cesar is going to be amazing for us. Look at the value he already has as well. Now, I've signed a couple of centre attacking midfielders, and I haven't signed a striker because I've changed things. I've decided to go for this. So I have basically moved one of the poachers down into the shadow striker, so there's two shadow strikers there now. And I actually think we've been playing better with it. But before I show the results, today's video is sponsored by Spitch. It is a free ultimate fantasy football app that is new to the market that you can download in the UK or Ireland as long as you're 18 or above. Don't go coming at me if you're 17 because you need to take a picture of your license. If you're not 18, you will not be coming in. That's what the bouncers used to say to me. But this is Spitch. You're not 18, you can't play. But it is still free to play and you can still win money. I have won money from playing this game for free. You build your own team, you collect your points on a week-by-week -week basis. It's not one of those fantasy football apps that if you missed a week, you have to start all over again next season. You can just continue and play next week. It's not too bad at all. You can also join many different leagues in different countries. The Bundesliga. Maybe you want to do a Champions League one. Maybe you want to do a Championship one. But if you do a Premier League one, there's a link down below to my community league. There's about 20 of you in there right now. Me and Dad, 
We're class at it, by the way. It, only a few very elite players have been able to beat us so far, as you can see here. But it's very easy to register. All you have to do is select this little bit here, and you can participate for free. And of course, you don't have to leave the app because all the statistical analysis is on the app itself. You don't have to leave to go to another one. It's on Spitch. So if you'd like to join for free, the link down below for Spitch, you'll be helping me out as a content creator as well. And right underneath it is the Community League. Join that, join my Community League and have a little bit of fun. And thank you very much to Spitch. So following on from our one or draw against Lazio, the first game we come back to was Juventus, where we still had the two up top. All right, at this point, we still had two up top. They beat us 1-0 with Fabio Vieira, uh, which is a good, good, not bad result from us, really. But this is where we really kicked on. I mentioned in the last episode how difficult our January is going to be. We've made it look easy, to be honest. A 2-1 victory against Napoli, Piccoli. You wouldn't have guessed that we lost Esposito because Piccoli's just gone, yeah, all right, I'll start scoring the goals for you. Uh, a 4-0 win against Torino. Piccoli's got another brace there. Hannibal gets one. Might have been his debut that game, actually. And Filipovic got in the 91st minute. 2-1 against Atalanta. Piccoli again. Julio Cesar's got in there. 2-0 against... Uh, Benevento, Pickley with another brace, 93rd minute getting his second, and Frozenone, Pickley gets another brace, Chalk went up for another brace, Andre Sheldrup also got one as well, and then a 4-1 victory after the transfer window closed against Roma, Julio Cesar got two, Pickley got one on the last kick of the game, it seems to be like, oh I haven't scored yet, have I? I'll get one now, and that's what he basically did, 4-1 against Roma, which means that we've actually looking quite good now, because we're back in top four, but we're right behind third place, and only one win away from Juve. They do have a game in hand though, uh, but we have closed the gap now, even to the top of the league. If you think about it, only five points separates us and Juve, uh, us and Inter Milan. If Juve win their game, then it's a little bit more. Obviously, it's six points, seven points, seven points between us, but it's still doable. It's still doable at this point. Now, Europa League, we haven't been given our game yet because, of course, there's like a secondary playoff before we get we go into the draw, so we won't find out yet. We'll have to find out at the end of this episode who we had and how we got on. But of course, we're also in the Coppa Italia against Benevento uh, in the quarter finals. So that's not bad at all. There's some decent teams still left into Atalanta, Napoli, Roma. No Juve though, which is a good sign. So today we are facing Parma. Now, this could be a bit of a tricky one because we are away from home and they are a bit of a mid-table team now who are doing quite well in the league. I want to see. So, Siddiqui's still out and Andre Diaz is still out too. So, we've had a few injuries recently, but I'm going to put one of... I'm going to have to put both of them on the bench, to be honest, because I've only got a grayed-out goalkeeper, which is something we might have to invest in in the summer as a backup goalkeeper because we simply just don't have one. Uh, Brescianini, I'm going to bring on for Swedberg, give him a little bit of a rest, but I want you to see some of these new guys. So, we're going to rock with them. Uh, Cecharone, is there anybody we can play other than Cecharone? I feel like he's just a disaster waiting to happen. We've got Mattia Vitti. Is he ready for a game? Balls. Balls to it, we'll play him. So Vitti will come in. He's also Italian. I like him. I'll, t I'll tell you what, no. <laughs> Poor lad. Filipovic will come in instead. Uh, a very good regen on this game. He's almost ready and fit and back. We're just going to play him anyway. Let's see how he does. Hannibal in that centre midfield on attack role. Let's see how he does in there. We've changed the role slightly because of course he used to be a ball winner midfielder. But yeah, this has been doing very well. So let's see how we do in this game against Palmer. I feel like if we're on the front foot against a lot of these teams, they struggle because we just have so many men in the midfield that they just can't cope despite whatever formation they're playing. And we always then look out to go wide. Shoot we need to and if if anything i haven't really done a lot of tactical tweaks during the game we are playing on snow today that's going to be lovely i don't recognize many of these players maybe marcus paolo chuck wani in midfield of course chuck wani is currently at norgeland in real life where we are doing our youth to gold save now remember we've got the second channel if you want to catch up on all of the youth to gold saves or monday wednesday friday we're on twitch live where the youth to gold starts at 9 a.m. in the morning. If you are free, maybe work evenings or lates or whatever, or you, you know, you just, a lot of people watch me during work and I, I respect it. I really do. Off we go though against Palmer. Right, it's very hard to see their white kits with the snow. Uh, but the blue lines definitely help. Don't let them tell you any otherwise. Brunetta there, he's played through Marcus Paolo. He's got a one on one. 
And Valido does very well, doesn't he? He's been a bit of a saviour, Valido. He's been fantastic for us, to be honest. Uh, somebody wrote in the comments a few few episodes ago that their brother played with him or something like that. I can't remember what it, exactly what it was, but yeah, it was a nice little cool uh, moment there. Thomas Rojo, so many offers for him in the January window that were all turned down. Sheldrop's on side. Sheldrop, that's his one weakness is finishing, but he gets so many chances because the rest of his game is good. Good at passing, great off the ball, so he plays lovely little one-twos. Oh, it's very difficult to stop being frustrated with him because he's one of these guys who gets like three or four chances a game. Maybe he slots one in, maybe he doesn't. Right, it's half time. We go into this in third place because even though we are only drawing, Atalanta have gone 1-0 down. Juve are 2-0 up, so they are breaking away from us now. They've actually gone top of the league uh, with a game in hand. Inter Milan are also 0-0 with Bologna. So this really needs to be an opportunity that we need to take. Chukwani on the ball. Don't break my heart, Chuck Wano. We have such a good relationship on Youth to Gold. Julio Zazar. Tildale Prato. He's not the best right back. He's definitely not the best right back. There's another right back that I almost signed during the January window, uh, but they wanted extortionate money for him, so I changed my mind. I think he was coming from Napoli, but he was Italian, and I like the look of him. He was 18. He looked fantastic. Jose Carlos. What a ball that is to Julio Cesar. <sighs> <laughs> the new boy coming in. The Brazilian slash Spanish wizard. He is fantastic. He is amazing. I'm so happy with that goal. The early crosses, of course, we have that selected. And it paid massively. Because look how much time and space he has. You don't even have to be good at heading to get that one in. Because the cross was so good. The cross was amazing from Jose Carlos. Love that goal. Right, I think it's about time we make a couple of changes. Going to bring on Diamonde. He's been a guy that we've been rotating quite a lot recently. Uh, Hannibal I might bring off as well for Swedberg. Bring him in that attacking midfield role. Well, that centre centre midfield on attack role. Uh, Wisdom Amy. He's on a yellow, but he's playing well, but he's struggling. We might have to just monitor this situation because we've got a lot of subs, but we're only 1-0. It's not like the game's won and we can just rest players. We want to see the game out, but he's actually probably our best defender now, which is the reason why we've got him straight in the centre there, doing what he can do best. I might also change his role from a ball player because we've seen already he's not that good at ball playing. So it might be something we have to change. Brescianini there. Oh, it's unlucky. He's hit the top of the bar. But still one all. Still one nil even. It's not one all. Oh no. They've got a highlight now. Don't say that I've I've just seen the future. Julio Sar. No. Chukwani's made it. Marasic back to Aaron. Played it out. Right, okay. Now we have to defend properly. Out to Salva. He's played it back to him. There's a lot of space there now. But what an interception that is from Filipovic. Even though he's on a yellow, he still made it to stop whatever was going to happen there. But they still have the ball. They're still on the attack. That's not going to get to Marcus Paolo. Come on, Del Prato. And there we go. Oh, that's so bad from you. That's so bad. Now they're in a position. They shot. It's hit the outside of the post. I thought it was a save. It's hit the outside of the post. It's a close one. The leader, I think he had it covered though. He definitely had it covered. covered. Right, we need a second one here because my art's racing. I don't like this. I don't like a nice little one nil. No, no, no. Make this two nil. Make it comfortable. Pickley. We haven't seen Pickley score yet. So this is it. This is the chance. Every game. It's only a matter of time. I forgot that he hadn't scored yet. I should have been. I should have had more confidence. I knew he was going to score. He's, he's he's on so much good form right now. His consistency must be high. I can't remember what it is. I don't remember everything. But that was a great goal. Now do we make that change? Because Amy is so... I don't want to get him sent off. Yeah. I, I'm going to make that change. I'm going to bring on Cecharoni. We're going to swap him with Filipovic. Just to be safe. He's our best defender. I don't want to lose him for, an, for another game. If Palmer do score here, there could be problems. Atalanta have also equalised quite late on, which is annoying, really. I think they go on level points with us now. With that win. Oh, he's passing right to Diamonde. And Pickley's in. Oh, a little bit of a, a through ball instead of a pass to his feet. Would have been so much better. But Swedberg's got it. That's the red. You're off, son. See you later. Kartsev, off you go. Early shower. It's cold. That's what he wanted. He wanted an early shower. It's nice and warm in the showers, isn't it? Come on, then. Bring us the final whistle and the three points. That will do lovely. We end the game in third place. Get in. Considering we finished so well last season, two seasons ago, 
actually, second. And we had a little bit of a drop off. I'm glad that we haven't continued dropping off. That's a good result for us. So we can see our last end of the season here. We still don't know who the second round knockout is going to be in the Europa League, but I, I fancy our chances to go a little bit further than what we are right now. Quarterfinals, semifinals would be lovely. The end of season, though, that last month in May will be telling because Lazio, Juve, Inter Milan and Napoli is our final four games. That's tough. That's really, really tough. Um, so we've got a bit of an easier run before that. Now's the time to keep our momentum going, win those games so we can be a little bit of uh, a little bit comfortable towards the end of the season. So let's simulate and find out how we do. Well, I don't know how, but Bologna have finished above us two points as well so frustrating that is just a win away from finishing back in the champions league which i would love to have done just for the money alone the money alone is so much in the champions league compared to europa league that bologna now oh that's really frustrating i think next season we can definitely do it with possibly the tactic that we're using now it seemed to have worked quite well uh well obviously it didn't in the second half i'm curious oh, oh europa league europa league <gasps> no i thought we won it I thought we won it. The runners up of the Europa League to Manchester United as well. Oh, that's such a shame. Jane Sancho, Kareem Adeyemi, Bruno Fernandes, and Julian Weigel scored. We were very unlucky. Cameron Puertes scored in the first first ten minutes of the game. They didn't. They oh, they scored so many before half time, like really quickly. To make it 3-1 at half time. I can't believe we got to the, fi the final. That's mental. It did look like we kind of steal the... Uh, we would have stolen the victory. They had a, nearly a 3.39 XG in the final. And they scored four goals. We had less than one and we scored two. Oh, that's crucial. That would have been amazing. If we had done that, that would have been class. Because then we would have actually gone to the Champions League. Despite finishing in fifth place. Coppa Italia though. Quarter final of the Coppa Italia. We were knocked out by Benevento. It's just really poor, to be honest. I'm quite curious then as the uh, the run that we had after the Palmer game. So there was the Palmer game, 2-1 loss. Oh, look at all the draws. Crotone, Torino, Milan. Uh, we beat Empoli, that's good. We drew to Bologna, typical. Beat Sassuolo, Genoa, that's a bad loss. It's a really bad loss. Cagliari as well, that's another bad loss there. We're at 96th minute. You kidding me, 96th minute. I am excited though because I've seen the teams that we've beat on the way. Uh, Lazio 1-0 loss to them. That's disappointing. Inter Milan 2-0 loss to them. But what's promising is our run into the Europa League final. We pulled Benfica, which that's a difficult draw. Uh, we drew two all away from home. We beat them 2-0. Pickley brace. Of course it is. Atletico Madrid, we lose 1-0 away from home. Then when they come to us, 5-3. What a game that is. Extra time as well. Pickley. Of course it is. Villarreal, another Spanish team. We beat them 1-0 at home. We went away and we beat them 3-1 there. Williams Swedberg with a brace. That's nice. And that's what got us to the final against Manchester United. That's amazing. Squad-wise then, I want to see goals. Pickley got 30. Let's go. Sheldrick got 16 with 17 assists. That's decent. Vasovic, who's been out on loan, has been doing okay. We loaned him to Serbia. He's, uh, he hasn't been doing that well, actually. Has he progressed? Not really. He's 20 years of age now. I hope to be a little bit better than that. Maybe we cash in on him. Maybe. That could be an option. I'm see The problems that I'm seeing, though, is the assist-wise. We're not getting a lot of assists. Diaz at right back is getting quite a few. And, on, of course, Andrea Sheldra, who might be set-piece taker as well. But other than that, I'm guessing the players that were getting us assists have left the club, Esposito being one of them. So next season, hopefully we can get Julio Cesar start scoring and assisting a lot more because I think he has the potential to be amazing. That five star, obviously Man City's bought him. Um, we'll see, we'll see for sure. Wizard Amy looks like he's had a good season as well. He does by average rating right Pickley with the highest. Sheldrick Diaz, Arojo, and Wisdom Amy. So that's positive. There is a lot of positives going into this. And transfer-wise, oh, get in. That's a lot. That's a lot of money. 53 million. We're finally starting to see a lot of transfer money. So that's good. Uh, finances, hmm, how are they giving us that? Don't know. Debts and loans? We, have any debt? we don't have any debts and loans. Uh, projection? 
Maybe we're about to come into some money that they know about that I don't. Oh, I'm unsure. Uh, training facility is now superb. We've got average youth facility, so I'll try and bump that up as much as I possibly can throughout the summer. But yeah, not a bad season for season number six. We need to get back into the Champions League, though, if we possibly can, and possibly win a Coppa Italia. That's the aim I want for next season. Champions League football, Coppa Italia, at least a final. I want a trophy though, because it's quite a sexy trophy. Thank you very much for watching. Love all the comments that you've been given recently. They're love on the series. So I hope you keep enjoying it. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Now, a bit of breaking news before you actually disappear. This is actually going to be the last episode of Venezia Takeover. I am sorry. I do apologize. However, at the end of the season, I just felt like I was a little bit down because of all the bugs that was happening. To be honest, it left a bit of a sour taste. So what I'm going to do instead is start... A new series. I've mentioned this new series quite a few times. We are going to South America and that will start next Wednesday. So I'm sorry, everybody. I know you all love the Venezia Takeover. Thank you very much for all the support on it. We give it six, six good years. So well, the new series will start next Wednesday. I'm thinking we stick with the same format. I have a little think about it before maybe I start it. But yeah, that will start next week. I hope you support it as much as what you did Venezia. And yeah, I'll see you next week. Bye bye.